In the upcoming videos, we are going to be using something that I call a muscle bone, which may sound a little bit strange. Is it a bone or is it a muscle? It's both, kind of. You can support CG Dive by purchasing this course or some of the exclusive courses on academy.cgdive.com. Subscription is also available. Here I have a new empty blender scene and I'm going to add a new single bone. Go to edit mode and this will be our muscle bone. So the muscle bone is made from blender bones. So in that sense it is a bone. But we'll set it up and use it to simulate something like a simple muscle. We are not talking about actual muscle simulation, which is much more complex. It's much simpler than that, but it can still be a very effective and cool technique. So let's see how we can go about it, because we are going to need it in the next chapter. So I'm going to use this default bone, and I'm just going to move it a little bit so that it's not completely straight in the center of the world, like this. And that will be my muscle in quotation marks. Now I need two tweak bones on each side of this muscle bone and those tweaks will actually move the muscle bone. So I'll press Shift A to add a new bone and then I need to snap this new bone exactly to this position. There are two ways to do that. One is to select this end of the bone, press Shift S cursor to select it and then select this bone and press Shift S selection to cursor. Then I'm going to duplicate this bone because I need one more over here and I can show you the other way to snap a bone perfectly and that is to switch to vertex snapping and then I keep the actual snapping option off. I move the bone and hold control and that will snap my twig bone to this end of the muscle bone. Now I want to make these twig bones a little bit smaller. If I press S with bounding box center pivot point then the bone will be scaled from the center. So I want to switch to something like individual origins and scale them down. Now to create my muscle, there are two things that we need to do. First, I'm going to parent the muscle bone to the twig bone, which is at the thick part of it. Control P, keep offset. Then I'll go to pose mode and I want to constrain the muscle bone to the tweak bone at the thin part of the muscle. And as you probably know, the order in which you have to select the bones for constraints is the opposite of parenting. So first we select the tweak bone, then shift select the muscle bone, which will become constrained. And then we press Control shift and C, and the constraints that we want are one, dumped track, and then again, Control shift C, and choose stretch two. With this setup, I can now select this bone and move it and it will stretch the muscle from one side and this one will stretch and squash it from the other side. And that's it really, that's the whole technique, but you can have more complicated chains of muscles. So if I go to edit mode and delete these bones and then I'm going to create a new one, make it a little bit bigger, right click and subdivide it. I can even extrude one more bone from here, let's say, and subdivide it. And now I'm going to add my tweak bones. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing as before, but for all of these bones. So I'm going to parent each muscle bone to the tweak bone that is at the thick part of it. So here, even though we have an intersection of three bones, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Just parent each muscle bone to the tweak bone that is at the thick part of the muscle. Then I'm going to switch to pose mode and set up the dumped track and stretch to constraints exactly the same as before for each bone. All right, and now if I move any of these tweak bones, they will move the muscle bones that are connected to them. And that way you can create a system of muscles that is as complex as you want. 
addons.cgdive.com organizes Blender resources so that you can easily find the exact tool you need. In the main video in this chapter, we are going to be using the raw copy rig type. This rig type is a bit special, so I want to give you a quick overview before we dive in. Basically, raw copy allows you tr to transfer an exact copy of a bone or a chain of bones from the meta rig to the final rig. All parenting and constraints and even drivers are preserved when you generate the rig. You may be thinking, isn't that the same as super copy or copy chain? And no, it isn't. Let's give a quick example. This is just uh, an empty scene that I have. I'm going to create a single bone, go to edit mode, make a copy of this bone, then go to pose mode, and let's make this um, and let's make this bone a super copy and the other one row copy and generate. Hide the meta rig, go to pose mode, and um, and the super copy rig type automatically created a bunch of bones. First, the, there is a control bone on layer one, which is the layer where this bone was in the meta rig. Then there is a an ORG bone on layer thirty one, and a DEF bone. So the other one was ORG. On layer 29 we have a DEF bone. And more complex uh, rig types like, like the arm or leg also create MCH bones here on layer 30. The raw copy, on the other hand, simply created a perfect copy of itself on layer 1, which is the same layer where we had it in the meta rig. Let's see how this is useful and what else we can do with the raw copy. I'm going to go to object mode, delete this uh, rig, and go back to my meta rig, edit mode, and I'm going to delete the super copy. Then let's go to pose mode and look at the rig type options for this raw copy bone. And as you can see, there isn't much, but there is some text which tells you that you can manually add ORG, MCH, or DEF uh, to your bones. And this is the power of raw copy. It allows you to create custom rig setups within the meta rig, and they'll generate together with the rest of your rig. And they can even interact with uh, the rest of your rig, which is uh, where it gets really interesting. But let's go slower and let's uh, try to make this a little bit clearer through some examples. I'm going to go to edit mode and make a few copies of this bone. First, let's randomly move them to, to different layers. So I'm just going to select each bone, press M and randomly move them on some sort of layer. Okay, and then I'm going to shift click all of these layers to unhide them. So I'm going to select this bone, press F2 and add DEF dash prefix to it. Then I'm going to select this one and M and add MCH dash prefix. And to this one, I'm going to add ORG dash prefix. Also, let's go to pose mode and randomly set up some sort of um, constraints for these bones. I'm going to select these two bones and shift control shift C and uh, choose copy rotation. Then in edit mode, I'm going to parent this bone to this one, control P, keep offset. And I think that's enough. I'm going to go to pose mode and click generate, hide the metric, and let's see what happened. First, it may seem that like some of our bones weren't generated, but that's not the case. If I shift click these two layers, 29 and 30, uh, you'll see these bones will appear again. Let's go to pose mode and select this bone, which we named DEF uh, bone. And as you can see, it kept it kept its DEF prefix. It was moved to layer 29, where, which is where um, Rigify keeps its deformation layers. And also, under bone tap, you'll see that the deform option is checked. On layer 30, 
we have the bone that we named MCH. It has the deform option automatically turned off and also it was moved to layer 30. So when you add these prefixes like DEF or MCH, Rigify will automatically move and organize your bones the way it organizes the other rig types. One exception is the ORG bone, which is over here. As you can see, even though I name it ORG, the ORG has been deleted. And also, logically, I was expecting this bone to be moved to layer 31, where Rigify keeps its ORG layers, but that didn't happen. I'm still not quite sure why that is. I also submitted a bug report about this and the developer of Rigify replied and it kind of explained uh, what's happening. He said that Rigify automatically deletes uh, ORG, the ORG prefix in order to avoid a bone that is named ORG, ORG, so ORG twice. Um, and I think in the future they are going to try to fix that by creating special rules for the raw copy rig type. But anyway, don't concern yourself too much with that. Uh, we are not going to need the ORG bones too much, and this won't stop us to create some cool stuff with the raw copy rig type. So let's uh, take a look at the other bones that we created. As you can see, they are uh, exactly as we had it them in the meta rig. This bone had a constraint that is controlled by this bone. And now if I rotate it, you'll see that the constraint is still active. Also this bone I parented to this one and the parenting is still uh, active. So yeah, uh, you just get a, an exact copy of your meta rig bones into the final rig. Something else that I want to point out, um, let's go back to the meta rig, create one more copy of this bone. Let's e hit E to extrude two more bones. So now I have a chain of bones. For most rig types, only the first bone in the chain needs to have a rig type. And all the other bones are then generated automatically. But for row copy, that's not the case. Let's demonstrate that. Um, this first bone is all already row copy and the other two are not. So let's uh, give the second one a row copy rig type and the third one will have no rig type. And then I'm going to generate. Hide the generated rig. Go to pose mode, and as you can see, the bones that had the, rig, the raw copy rig type were generated, but the third one was not because it didn't have the, the rig type. And as I mentioned, the raw copy rig type can interact with other uh, rig types. I'm going to show you a concrete examples in the ogre rig, but let's give a really, really quick example here. Let's uh, go to object mode and just delete everything create a basic human, go to edit mode, create a new bone, in pose mode, make it raw copy, edit mode, and I'm going to move it over here. And then in pose mode, I'm going to select the upper arm, then shift select the raw copy bone, control shift C and choose copy rotation. For the constraint options, I'm going to choose local space to local space. And now if I rotate this upper arm bone, it the uh, new row copy also rotates. I'm going to generate this rig. And now here I see that my row copy rig type uh, got this weird widget, a circular widget over here, which may confuse you. The reason for that is that I already had a widget with the same name. Uh, this is something that I explain in the manual. Uh, for now, let's just undo before the generation, go to object mode and here cl right click on the widgets um, collection and delete it. Okay, and I deleted all widgets and now I'm going to generate again. Hide the meta rig. Now, if I move this arm, you'll see that this new bone that we added rotates every time I move the arm. And that is because it is constrained to the ORG bone, this, this bone on layer 31. And so as it rotates, this row copy bone also uh, rotate, uh, rotates according to the copy rotation constraint that we set up. Now, this is a fairly pointless example. 
in the actual tutorial we are going to use this in a more practical way and one last thing that i want to show you is extremely advanced i would say this tutorial is the only place that you're going to learn this actually i'm going to undo and go to the meta rig go to pose mode and let's find um, a bone let's say the org spine 006 which is the uh, head i'm going to go to the bone tab and select this uh, name and copy it okay now i'm going to go back to the meta rig go to pose mode select my row copy bone go to the rig type options and click relink constraint and inside this field i'm going to press ctrl v and then enter and what it does is it tells Rigify to to reparent this bone again during the generation process so we can parent this bone in the meta rig to to a bone in the generated rig which doesn't yet exist as long as we know that it's going to exist we can use this option and parent a row copy bone to it again we're going to have a more practical example in the actual tutorial Okay, don't worry if this last uh, section didn't quite make sense. As long as you understand uh, how to set up a row copy rig type and uh, how to add DEF and MCH prefixes, then you're going to be okay. We can move on. That's it for this chapter. Please like, subscribe, and check out our other projects academy.cgdive.com and addons.cgdive.com.